So I'll start with KJ Simpson, who uh, committed to us this summer. You know, KJ is the type of player that we're really targeting right now in that uh, he loves the game. You know, I, I would say that in, in the time that I've been here at Arizona, you always try to reflect back on those young players that work for us, that were productive, and, and it worked not only for us, but them. And the one characteristic that I believe stands out is, you know, Arizona, it's a big stage with a lot of bright lights. There's a lot of eyes on our program. We're in a high expectation environment, and it just doesn't fit somebody who likes basketball. You have to love it. I mean, you have to, you have to just be consumed by it, and you have to be willing to put the work in. And KJ is that type of person and player. He loves the game. Uh, he's not just a point guard. I mean, we could play him in a three-guard lineup. Um, as a, as a combo guard with another point guard, or I think he could be the one and only guy out there to handle the ball. Uh, very athletic, can be a two way player. I would say that's the other thing. Guys that understand that defense is important and have ability to play our man to man. Um, I think those guys enjoy our program perhaps more than than somebody that that struggles on that side of the ball. So we want to get a balanced type of player and comes from an incredible family, played uh, for some really good high school coaches and a high school program that people really respect. And we're excited to have them. We, we really are, uh, especially, you know, with COVID and, you know, we weren't able to bring him to our campus, obviously. And for him to believe in us at that time was really important uh, towards establishing a great fall recruiting for, for us. Uh, Shane Noel from Seattle. I think everybody on this call is familiar with Jalen, his older brother, uh, who developed at Washington. And I, I got to, to know Jalen through Lorenzo Romar, who recruited Jalen in Seattle. And, uh, you know, again, Shane comes from a, a great family, lost his father uh, early in, in his lifetime, which I think really motivates him uh, as a basketball player. But, you know, Jalen Noel, if you followed his, his career, he got better. He improved as, as he got older. I think Shane is in many ways a diamond in the rough uh, as we evaluated him. You know, uh, taller than K.J. Simpson, more six foot four, six foot five, but somebody that uh, has the ability to dribble the ball, pass the ball, play in transition. And again, back to that two-way player, a guy that can play our version of defense, and somebody who doesn't like the game of basketball but really loves it, that, that wants to, uh, to do great things. And, you know, by the way, you know, KJ and Shane, again, they come from winning programs, both their travel teams that they've played with and also uh, with, their, with their high school coach and, and program. Shane, very, very uh, well coached there as well uh, from his high school coach. So we're elated to, uh, to have him. Obviously, Jason Terry was a big connection to Shane uh, because of JT's relationships in Seattle and uh, being from Seattle himself, which certainly helped uh, make a connection between our basketball program and uh, in, in Seattle as, as a city. Uh, Shane's grandmother lives in Phoenix as well, which uh, certainly helped us. Shane Dizzoni, um, he would have been the player that maybe we, we connected with uh, a little bit later than the first two. But, uh, you know, Shane, the things that stand out in our recruitment of him is, again, has been in a very highly competitive setting at the high schools that he's been at, plays on one of the best travel teams uh, in our country and has been well coached. But, you know, everybody talks about his motor and what a great competitor he is. Again, someone who loves the game of basketball and uh, can play both offense and defense. You know, we're, we're lucky right now because uh, he's at a, uh, a prep school, uh, Brewster Academy, where, you know, there's been a ton of great talent that's developed. Uh, he's in kind of a highly competitive environment right now, which is really unique because uh, there's a lot of high schools, as we know, that aren't even having a high school season. So, He's practicing every day, which I think will really help him. But uh, again, a lot like Shane Noel, you can't pigeonhole Shane at, 
at just one position. He can play multiple positions. We love the fact that he can play defense and offense. And uh, again, a great competitor from the East that we're excited to, uh, to have. So, you know, we have three athletic types of players, versatile players that really can bolster um, our depth moving forward at the one, the two, and, and the three. And all three of those guys can be on the court together as well. Hi, right, Coach. So I was wondering with the three commits that just signed, is this it for the recruiting class? Or are you looking to add more later down the line? I mean, we, we've signed so many players in the last three years that it's always hard to say uh, yes or no to that question. You know, it, you have to take in information as it comes. A lot of things change over the course of uh, the next six months. But this year, because of the way our roster is constructed, talking about this year's team, we're not going to experience the same type of turnover that we've had in recent years. So because of that, Clearly, we don't have the number of scholarships, and uh, because we were fortunate to get these three to join us now, uh, I don't look at this spring as being as crucial or, uh, you know, as as just uh, active as it's been the last couple of springs. We, you know, if we had anything or anybody, I'm sure it would it would come, you know, late in the spring, and it, I'm sure it would wouldn't be more than just one one player and that player would be a forward or a front court player if uh, if we add anybody at all uh, at this point uh, we're looking forward to developing the young people that are in our program again uh, as we've we've tweaked things and tried to target different styles and types of players you know part of what we want to have happen in our program is freshmen becoming better sophomores you know sophomores returning with more spirit experience and going from maybe our seventh or eighth man to a starter. But that development that you watched with uh, Solomon Hill, that you watched with TJ McConnell, just using those two examples uh, with Kadeem with Allen, you know, we, we want to uh, have more of that so that we don't have as much change from uh, one season to the next. Sean, uh, along those lines, uh, do you think that uh... – these these three guys represent players that maybe can be two, three, four year players. Or in light of what you said earlier about Zeke, is it still right. too fluid to even say that? How do, how do you kind of look at that? No, Bruce, uh, that's a very good question. And, and you know, you're kind of right in, in how you phrased it. It's it's almost impossible to pigeonhole these young guys in into a certain length of time that they're going to be in your program. But what we can clearly control is the conversations and the way we recruit them, really making sure that we're aligned and them reaching their own goals and choosing Arizona uh, to win championships, to develop, to really play college basketball first. And clearly all of these players, like if you love the game and you know, you're, you're trying to uh, become an NBA player, there, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, one of the great days for a basketball program is the one we just had two days ago when we had three players, you know, chosen in this past year's draft. I mean, in some ways, that's it's what it's about. You know, these guys being able to reach their goals and dreams through our basketball program and university. So you're right. Um, it's not about a four year sentence, so to speak, where you come to Arizona and you're not allowed to leave. Uh, but we want young people to come here to get an education, to enjoy Tucson, to want to win, to want to develop and to leave here when it's when it's ready. You know, it's uh, last thing you want is young people leaving your program and uh, and it not working out for them, because when it doesn't work out at 20 years old, it's not going to change anytime soon. You know, it's it's kind of like a different path they'll take for the next uh, 30 or 40 years of their life. So when they leave here, we want them to leave when it's time, uh, when they're valued as part of the game. So uh, that's how I'll answer that, Bruce. Yeah, I know the, the NBA is the the main selling point for, you know, getting guys to, you know, come play for the program. But I'm just curious, you know, with the number of guys that you've had go overseas, do you address that with, with any of these recruits? Yeah, and, you know, Justin, I, I think that, like kind of how you phrase that, you know, all of us, when we recruit a young person to our basketball program, they're going to have their own goals and dreams. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
but they also have to look at our basketball program, the University of Arizona, you know, the community that that makes up our university, Tucson, who loves college basketball, that they they also are signing up for an experience in college where they get a world-class education. They have an opportunity to play in one of the best conferences in college basketball, the Pac-12. You know, they're able to live here in Tucson as part of a campus community that's just, you know, an exciting, special place. So, you know, you don't, you don't ever want to feel like the reason or the only or the one and only reason they came to us is because, you know, Josh Green, Nico Mannion, and Zeke Naji, they all were part of this year's draft, you know. Uh, I think there has to be some balance, and we're really after that. And the other part is, you know, it's a little bit like my answer to the question about Nico. Nico could have the longest career of the three guys that were picked this year. We, we just don't know. TJ McConnell is getting ready to enter year seven as an NBA player. And if he stays healthy, he's going to play a decade in the NBA and he didn't even get picked. So it's so much about the career they have and how long it is than it is, you know, where they are on draft day or how quickly they leave Arizona. You know, we just want to make sure that we're able to develop those young people that are a part of our program that when we recruit them, we want them to understand that it's bigger than just their own goals, that they should want to play in a tournament, compete for Pac-12 championships, play in front of 14,500 people at McHale Center, which is going to happen again, you know, live here in the West where the weather's amazing, you know, play. I could keep going. So it's not just a one part decision for them. And I think if it is that or Maybe when somebody in the past has chosen us for only that reason, it, it doesn't feel right because we're asking a lot of these guys. I mean, they have to attend every class. Uh, they have to be eligible. We want to move them towards graduation. You know, they have to practice hard. Uh, they have to be responsible. They have to lift weights. You know, if you keep going, uh, all of those things don't fit just one goal. You know, you have to be a part of something that's bigger than your own goals. So. When we recruit these people, it's also their family structure, their high school and travel team coaches, and sometimes other people that really have their best interest. But we want them to choose Arizona for that total picture, not just one part of it.